I was thinking, so I was gonna film for you, like just a sit down video of like me explaining slash like already filmed it, of me explaining my process when I'm working with like a new repo for the first time. I think we're gonna do it a la bunny, which is basically do it the similar format to what I would do live, but it's just recorded instead of me actually being live. All right, I guess we'll get into the tutorial and we'll see if we can PR some open source project, but yeah. Welcome back, welcome in. Sit down, grab your coffee or tea or water, okay? Hide your homies out there, I see you. And let's skedaddle. Okay, so we are gonna try and tackle this issue for GoCovish. I have zero idea if we're gonna be able to do it or not, <laughs> but I do know that we just did something similar for VHS. It's like in one of the upcoming release for it. So I think I can look at that code and get a little bit of a reference for it. I'm actually, I'm not sure how complex the GoCovish project is. I don't think it's that complex. It's not really the best example for me to go off of, but we can start with a simpler project. And then if you guys like this kind of format, we can also do some more complex projects. So give it a like if you like this format. If for this one, let's try and go with the issue where we can set themes and things like that for GoCovish. And for anybody who isn't familiar with GoCovish, it's basically a, and obviously I'm, I'm probably mispronouncing that as well, by the way. Um, but it's basically, it'll show you the uh, test coverage that you have in your Go projects from the command line. I find it almost like gamifies uh, writing tests for me because it's like you want to you want to get it all green and like it shows you it'll show you like the the lines of code that aren't covered in your tests it'll highlight that so even if the function itself is like green it's like it'll show you the specific uh, cases that aren't covered in, in your tests so super valuable tool love it and would love to see a cappuccino theme hello I think we should implement the cappuccino theme for this just for funsies and let's let's do it we're actually gonna start with me cloning VHS locally because that way you guys can see how I use my tools a little bit better. Um, but I want you guys to see how I use my tools because these tools are basically how I have become more effective at, it's the same tools that I use for basically finding where this is implemented in VHS. Same thing that I would use if I was like in some other repo. I haven't worked on VHS at all, so I don't actually know the repo at all. But we're gonna find where they're implementing the themes so that we can yoink the code kind of inspired, inspiration. Okay, we'll be inspired by the code, all right? Okay, so that's a lot of Go files. So first things first, let's actually, maybe I'll move my little noggin up here. Let's let's move me up here, okay? And then let's open up NeoVim and let's use a little live grep action. Okay, Lua line, stop it, you're embarrassing me. I wonder if there is a theme. Okay, so there's this default theme. It looks like, okay, so these are in the test, command underscore test. So it looks like it's been added to the commands, but what I could do, whoa. Oh, well, there's a themes.go file. All right, well, this looks interesting. This looks like it might be where we wanna be. I can probably zoom this out a tiny bit. I think it's a little, it's a little large. I can't see anything, all right? You guys are gonna just have to deal, okay? Get your magnifying glasses out and deal with it. Yeah, okay, so we got a glamour theme. This one has a bunch of colors. Um, I think what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna open up a new little kitty tab and let's go into, let's go into projects and let's actually clone GoCovish. We should be okay. I should probably actually just fork it and then we'll clone that fork, okay? Actually, I just realized some of you might not know how to fork it. So um, for the record, you go, um, you go to the repo and then you hit the fork button and then it'll, and then you basically just hit okay and then it, it does the thing. Oi. Where's my fork? Hello? Go punish. Oh, thank goodness. All right, lost. All right, we'll do a little git clone -aroo. And we're, we're gonna pretend like my other keyboard isn't right here. And then I'm actually just immediately that fast on a curved ortholinear keyboard. All right, just a 10x, 10x dev, okay? And so let's go into go Covish. And then here, let's see if I, if I go run it. I don't even know what's gonna happen here. Coverage report not found. Okay, yeah, 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 yeah. I gotta find another project with tests. Actually, my PJs one has tests. I actually am lazy and I actually do go install and dot. And so what that does is it's actually gonna build the project and then install it in your go bin. So now if I were to do like go 
bin, you'll see that I have GoCovish in there. So it should like overwrite if I have an existing one in there, but we'll open up another, another tab. All right. So go to projects. We'll go into P. Well, that's awkward. Do I not have PJs on here? Hello? That's actually hilarious that I don't have it in here. I guess I haven't been working on it on stream very, very much since my pop OS. I've been working on it on my laptop. Well, that makes sense. Okay, so there you go. So it ran the, it ran the test. So what we can do. Okay, so lols at my terminal history outing me and my issues here. I didn't do a great job explaining how to actually run GoCovish. If you're wondering how to do that, check out the README. It's, they've got a bunch of uh, well-documented information on how to do it. We're going to do GoCovish, and then now you'll be able to see what um, what we what we actually have tests for. So if I hit enter here, it's going to show me what we've actually written tests for is all green, all those test cases that we have, or like all that code that has test cases covering it. That's good. So that's a little demo of what GoCovish looks like. So we have a Glamour theme. So it looks like, okay, when is this used? So this is where I would normally do. So in, for me and NeoVim, I have a GR as a shortcut for basically like get references. And so that way I can see any time that this variable is being used when my cursor is over it. So in this case, it looks like the Glamour theme is the default theme that's being used um, with the new term renderer. So it looks like it's being used when we are rendering it. What we could do. So I don't know. Yeah, I don't know how applicable the VHS code is because it's kind of being used based on Glamour rendering. So where you set the styles there. Um, so maybe not actually the best example. So let's actually open up NeoVim in our little GoCovish area. Okay. And then maybe we got green somewhere in here. What's uh or style? Style? Ooh, I saw styles. Internal styles, styles.go. Okay, so here we have our style so as you saw i kind of just searched for things that would maybe bring me to some color i mean i probably could have searched for the word color that would have been the better um the better call there but what we can do is support different themes so what might be interesting we can hard code it for now and then maybe in the future we want people to be able to kind of like pipe in a file with themes so maybe it would be like a yaml file i'm not too sure Anyway, we can, we'll run these proposals by the author and see what they think. All right, so let's do a stuff for like default theme. Also, it's so hard typing with these. Look at how long these nails are. On a mechanical keyboard, like who is she? Hello? All right, and then we'll have a struct. And basically this struct would be prime, have a uh, primary color, which is a string. And then we'll do kind of the same thing. Uh, but we're going to change this to a uh, secondary color and change this one. I actually really need to fix my autocomplete. I keep forgetting about it until I am writing code again. And then I'm like, oh, wait, what? <laughs> Why am I like this? Um, and so maybe I'll make it this actually. This is kind of just like any theme would look like this. All right. So now we've created that theme struct. And then what we can do is we can probably have some uh variables so let's do a var we'll create some some like types of themes so here we would probably have a default theme and that's going to be a type theme all right and so what we can do here because we're probably going to have like a bunch of these different themes i mean for now we're pretty much just going to have um we're going to have that we'll do uh let's add a capuchin theme and that's kind of that's that's a theme uh, and that should be, that should be good. Okay. Let's do an initialization for the default theme. So we'll create a function called a uh, new, new default. I feel like I should call it new default styles. It's like using the default theme. You know what I mean? Anyway, it returns a uh, default theme. And what this is actually going to do is we are going to return uh, default theme. It's going to be yoink this. Okay. 
secondary color and then um, inactive color. So I think actually we can probably just return, so you can probably just return a beam. I don't know if we necessarily need one for uh, the default, right? So new default styles, um, funk. Cause I guess what I'm trying to think about is I'm like, okay, am, why Okay, why am I creating these dysfunctions? The, I, I guess the idea is that you'd be able to create your own theme. So like you would be able to basically do like a set theme and then it has, as um, you pass in the primary color, secondary color and inactive color. And then I would use that to create the themes. So then when somebody would use like set capuchin theme, it would be like, but then they could just use it. I could just hard code it. So I think for this is actually going to be a function. So basically what we've got is because obviously, so when we're in Go, uh, you dec declare a data structure and then you set the values for that usually in like some kind of initialization or whatever function. So that's what we're gonna do for the different themes. Uh, that's what we're gonna do for the Capuchin Macchiato. So this is gonna return a theme, a theme data structure. And basically what we're gonna do is, we actually, uh, the Capuchin team just came out with a Go module. So what we can do is we can actually just yoink the colors so as you can see, I just created an issue, or I just commented on the issue to see what the author thinks. I think it makes the most sense to just have some kind of a config file that maybe if they set it to something other than the default theme, it like writes to that file and states what theme they should be, it should be using, something like that. Um, so maybe it's a flag that you run once and then that sets up the, uh, the theme. So yeah, not sure how we wanna do that, but we will see. <laughs> All right, so what I decided on, by the way, I, I've like done a little bit of hacking on this since we last spoke, but um, what I decided on is I was like, okay, do we want to, like, obviously we don't want the user to have to like set it. Like, so if they wanted to set it each time that they run it, it could just be a, a flag or a sub command or flag basically. Um, but we probably don't want to ask our users to like redo that every single time. So then I was like, okay, well, do we need like a config file? But then I'm like, okay, that's a little over the top for just setting a theme. So basically what the plan is, is I'm going to implement it using an environment variable. So we're going to have uh, the GoCovish theme as the environment variable, uh, line 46. And basically we're going to do a switch and we're basically going to have a list of supported themes that are actually like implemented here already. And people can PR more themes and We'll organize the code a little bit better because this doesn't all need to be in the same styles.go. It can be in styles dot like themes.go or something like that instead. But for now, just putting it all in the styles and then we'll tidy it up once I've tested that it works. So now I'm gonna test my changes. I made some changes. I double checked that I resolved all the conflicts and stuff using the 
um, a diagnostics list for the workspace. You can do, um, if you check out my dot files, my init.lua file has all of my LSP related keybinds and stuff like that. So if you do, uh, there's one that's for work workspace diagnostics list and it's built, it's a telescope. Is it tel yeah, it's, I think it, it integrates with telescope at least. That one's super helpful. I use that all the time. But now I'm just gonna test my changes. So I'm doing a go install dot for like installing the current project that I'm in. And then we're gonna try and run uh, go covish on my PJs that we did originally. Oof, yeah, there's something it doesn't like there. So let's find where that happens. Set items. Uh, I don't think bubbles list. Yeah, so it looks like there's something that I tried to do before it was initialized. The model.go line 91. I will debug and let you guys know what the result is. Okay, so it didn't like where I put my uh, set styles, so I gotta figure out what's up there. All right, so it seems to be working now. Um, one thing is that it seems like this available files view is like not highlighting properly so I gotta double check that but it looks like this is rendering properly let me check if the themes work looks like this is basically just loading up the default theme so we'll try that and um, basically we'll just save that suspend it do another go install dealio and then that should stop outputting the false thing and then let's go ahead, let's export, uh, I think it's uh, go covish. Theme equals macchiato. Okay, we're gonna try the red pedro latte. That's interesting. But that's like a slightly different green. So I think that's working. Should I, what is the macchiato, why is that one failing? Why is the macchiato one failing? I don't know what that's from. I don't know if it's from Bubble Tea, if it's from like the upstream dependency. Let me do a git restore of the Go mod for Go Covish and make sure that it works. So I can show you guys how to do that. So we're gonna go back to this little tabaruski. I really hope this works. Okay, wait, let's uh, reset this theme to just the normal one. I wonder. Okay, but then if I go back to one that I've done already, it seems to not have that issue. Okay, I don't know why. I'm gonna push, I'm gonna PR it or like not, I'm gonna push it and like see if I can get their help on it. Cause I don't know why that's happening. We're just gonna um, casually write a little VHS tape for um, showing what's happening. All right, so it looks like, so it's reproducing that error. And then if we run it again, it runs fine. It's a little, little slow on the scrolling. Um, and I think I need to, I wanted to scroll a little bit longer. All right, this should be the updated GIF. So now it'll, yeah, it's showing us the error, which is nice. Um, we're able to reproduce it. And then, yeah, that flips through it much nicer. Perfect. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and PR that. Alrighty. So switching over here. So basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to, good contribute, I can just do it here. So I, you can either do it here or you can do it like through the Go Covish, like the original. Uh, here I could go pull requests and I could do new pull request. Oh, there you go, compare across forks, there you go. And so the head repository, I can change to my, my repo and compare the master. And yeah, those are all the changes that I made. Looks good to me. And I'll go ahead and create a pull request. I'm going to say add a capuchin theme and I'm going to say 
So I'm just gonna give them a bit of context around, uh, I usually personally like to say what changes happened. Alrighty, so we created our PR. Uh, we're gonna hear back, hopefully, on some feedback on that. If, you, uh, if you'd like to see part two of this, of seeing what was causing that error, and potentially if we do a pair programming session or anything like that, if you wanna see that, give this video a like, and if it reaches uh, 400 likes, then I will do 400. Mm. If it reaches 200 likes, then I'll do a part two to this configurable themes PR and we'll see what the issue was, okay? Bye nerds, I'll see you in the next one.